In this skill, we're going to be balancing simple equations. So we're going to be given the reactants. Here we have K, potassium, and F2, fluorine. And we're going to be given the products. Here we have KF, which is potassium fluoride. And we need to balance this equation to make sure we have the same number of moles of reactants as we do products. So I'm going to write out my equation a little bit bigger so I can see it better. So I've got K plus I have F2 and that's going to create KF. Okay, so the method I'm going to use is called inspection. So that's where we have a look at our reactants and products and we count how many of each element we have before and after. We see where there's something that doesn't match up and then we try to fix it and we repeat that method over and over until our equation is balanced. So I'm gonna make a little table down here where I'm gonna have my reactants and my products. And then I'm gonna have my elements. So here our elements are K and F. So first let's go ahead and count. So on our reactant side, that's the left hand side of our equation, I have one K and I have two Fs because I have F with a subscript two. On the after side of the equation, I have KF. So I have one K and one F, that's the products. Okay, so we can see here that so far, the K, the potassium, matches up. We have one of each, one reactants and one products. However, for the fluorine, we have two in our reactants and only one in our products. So I'm gonna add some extra on the product side to try to fix this. And on the product side, my fluorine is in this compound KF. So I'm gonna add an extra one of those. So right now we just have one set of that on the right hand side. I'm gonna add a two so that we now have two sets of that on the right hand side. So now that I've done that, we're gonna repeat the inspection method. So I'm gonna empty my table. For K, on the left I have one still. On the right, there's one in this compound, but I have two sets of it. So we have two on the right now. As for F fluorine, on the left we have two because we have F with a subscript two. And on the right, we also have two because we have F in that compound and we have two sets of it. Okay, so now looking at our table, the fluorine now looks good. We've got two before and two after, but the K, the potassium, now doesn't match up. We've got two after and only one before. So again, I'm gonna add where I've got something missing. So since we have two little K in our reactants, I'm gonna add more K in our reactants. So here's our K in the reactants, it's all on its own. Currently we've just got one of them. I'm gonna add a two there, two coefficient, to show we've got two now in the reactants. So now I'm gonna go ahead and empty my table and count them up again to see if I need to add more of something or if I'm done. Okay, so now before we have two K, so two Ks before, after we have two sets of KF, so we've got two Ks after as well. As for the fluorine, we've got F2, so we've got two Fs before, and afterwards we've got two sets of KF, so we've got two Fs after. So we can see now with these coefficients that I've added, the reactants and products are equal for both K potassium and F fluorine. So that means I've balanced my equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my coefficients we had two potassiums K. We only have one set of F2 fluorine. Usually we would just not include a number since when there's no number, we assume there's one. But when you're filling in your answers in these questions, you're gonna to need to enter a one there. And then we had two KF afterwards. Wonderful. Our final step is just to complete this table, which is exactly the same as what we drew down here, just to do a check to double check and make sure our answers are correct. So we had two K before, and afterwards we also have two Ks. 
we had two f's before because we have the f with a subscript two and we have two f's after as well so just to summarize in this technique i'm firstly writing out my equation with no coefficients and i'm drawing my table and counting up my reactants and products for each element then when i notice something doesn't have enough i'm adding some there and I'm repeating that process, adding up reactants and products and adding more stuff until eventually it's going to be balanced. Let's try one more question. Here we have Kr3P2 and that forms Kr and P4. So I'm going to add those things as my elements in my table. We've got Kr and P, those are our two elements. And I'm going to draw out my equation just here. So we've got Kr3P2 goes to Kr plus P4. Okay, so let's go ahead and add up each element before and after. So for Kr, before we have three Krs, because we've got Kr with that subscript three. After, we just have one Kr there, no subscript and no coefficient. Then for P, before we have two P's, because we've got that subscript two. And after we have a subscript four and we have four P's. Okay, so here we can see that neither of our elements, CR or P, neither of those are currently balanced. So we can just choose one that we want to try to fix. So since I can see I don't have enough CR, I could try and add some on the right hand side. So right now we've got three CRs on the left. I've only got one CR on the right. So I'm gonna add some there. So I could just add a two here to make two CRs. So I'm actually gonna go and put a three there since that'll kind of speed up the process a bit. And I'm gonna recount my elements on the reactants and products. So CR, we've got three before, and we've now got three after as well. So that's now looking good. With P, we have two before and four after still, that's not changed. Okay, so we can see here that we don't have enough P in our reactants. We've only got two, but we've got four in our products. So I'm going to add some more. Now, in our reactants, the P is in this uh, compound here. So I'm going to, instead of just having one of those, I'm going to have two of those. So let's recount again now and see how that goes. So now we've got CR with a subscript three, and then we've got two sets of them. So that's two times three, which is six. Afterwards, we have three CR. Now for the P, before we have P with a subscript two, and we've got two sets of them. So we've got two times two, which is four P before in our reactants. Afterwards, we've got P4, so again, we've got four after. Okay, so now our P's are looking good, but the CR's, again, don't match. We can see I've got six in the reactants and three in the products. So I'm gonna add some more to the products so we can make that match. Right now I've got three CRs in the products. I need six. So instead of just adding one to that, I'm gonna go straight away and add six because I think that might help to balance this out. And let's recalculate each of those things on our table again. So for the CR before we've got a subscript three and a uh, coefficient two. So two times three gives us six. Afterwards, we've got six CR. Then for the P, before we have P with a subscript two, and we've got two as our coefficient. So two times two is four. Afterwards, we've got P with a subscript four, so that's four. Awesome, so finally we can see we've got six CR before and six after. We've got four P's before and four after, so these are now balanced. So you can see that we needed to do multiple steps and depending on what you choose for your steps, you might need to do more. If we had added just one extra CR at a time, 
we would have added like five more steps in there. And it's okay to do it that way, it's not wrong. But if you can start to guess what you think the number might be next to help balance it, that will speed up your process a bit. But it's also okay just to do it by adding one each time, adding it up and going again until you become a bit more confident. Okay, so let's fill in our numbers. We've got two CR3P2, we've got six CR, and we've got one P4. Remember, we don't normally put a one if we're just writing the equation, but in these questions, we're gonna add a one so that you can check your answer. Okay, finally, to double check, we'll fill out our table here. We had six CR before and six after. We had four P before and four after. So again here, guys, we're just writing out our equation and drawing our table to count up what we have in the reactants before and what we have in the products after. And then we're just adding things one by one to, and then recalculating until it looks like it's balanced.